Hi, this is John at ArrangerForHire.com. Today, we're going to bring the ARIA player into Logic X Pro as a multi-timbral instrument in order to take full advantage of Finale's human playback as played through the Garreton ARIA player, as well as Logic X Pro's multi-timbral, multi-channel editing capabilities. When we're done, we're gonna have complete mix control over all 16 channels of an instance of the ARIA player in Logic X Pro. We'll start in Finale. We're going into MIDI audio, audio units, banks, and effects, clicking on the ARIA player. There's all of our instruments. We're going to save these as a bank. When saving presets from the ARIA player, they go into your library application support plug, the ARIA presets com.plog.aria folder. Let's call this Tentet. Now I've already exported the MIDI from Finale, so we're just going to go in, create a new session in Logic Pro X. Right away, a prompt comes up to create a track. We're going to go straight to the ARIA player, create a multi-output 16x stereo, and we're going to create a multi-timbral instrument with 10 parts. This prompt is automatic. It asks us to populate the channel slots in ARIA player. I've already saved this as an instrument. So we have it right here, 10 tet. So we're gonna load that. Those are all of the, we're gonna start with all of the instruments that we had in the finale file. Now you may notice that all of these outs are assigned to one and two. That's the default behavior of the ARIA player. And what we need to do is distribute these amongst the channels. Alto can be one and two. Tenor should be three and four. Barry, five and six. Trump, one. There is our ensemble. And you know what, I'm gonna save this. 10 tet audio routed. We're gonna name our instrument tracks according to the part assignments in the in the multi we created earlier. Let's bring in our MIDI. When this MIDI imports, it's going to create a series of new instrument tracks. It's asking me about the frame rate that detected. I'm going to match it. And um, now I want this MIDI up in these aux, aux tracks. So they're sitting where they're going to go. We don't need these tracks now. So we're going to delete them. All right, so what do we have so far? OK, it sounds like we got our audio effects are turned on in the ARIA player. So I'm going to turn them off so that we have really maximum control over mix. Good, nice dry sound. So you may notice all these faders are moving together. If we try to solo a track, all of them solo. If we, they all mute. Right now there's no way to separate them. The reason for this is, is that there's one instance of the player on one channel and all of these are auxes that, that are integrated with that single instance. So there's really only one audio source so far. And uh, what we want to do, at this point, we could bounce our tracks out. You can select a track and hit the region solo button. And you can see you get your individual track. And if you want to bounce it to audio, you can uh, right click it bounce it in place, and you've started building your session with audio tracks. But what if you want to stay in the MIDI universe as long as possible? Say you, you have more MIDI tracks coming in, or you want to make changes, you want to be able to make changes in the tracks that you have. It might be a good idea to avoid going into the audio universe as, as long as possible. So with this setup, uh, there's more to be done in order to enable that. Next step is to go into 
the mix window. And you can see we have only three channel strips showing. Let's see, if we turned on all of them, we'd see a couple of auxes uh, that we're not using. There's uh, the stereo out and the master. I mean, we, we're using those, but we don't need to see them at this point. Go into tracks view. Now, you'll notice that uh, the player has a plus sign next to it. With this plus sign, we can add channel strips that target individual stereo pairs. We're going to go through and label these. Okay, we got them all labeled. So far we have one player. We got a set of auxes and a set of channel strips. Now, in order to be able to connect this audio, we need two auxes for each instrument. One that takes the input from the player and the other to bring that audio back into the logic session as a discrete audio track. So we're going to select all of these and we're going to create tracks for them. Fortunately, uh, Logic has uh, automated this process. So with these tracks selected, we can use the create track feature. Now remember, these aren't tracks yet, they're just channel strips. So we're creating tracks from the channel strips. There they all are. So now we got a little bit of a mess in the arrange window. You see we have two tracks now named Tenor. They're both aux tracks. We're going to pair these up. Now we're going to select these pairs that we've created. Create a track stack. I'm going to use the Macintosh shortcut for all of these. Now we're going to create a summing stack. It has more powerful mixing features in a summing stack than a folder stack. Folder stack will just enable muting, soloing, and volume adjustment. A summing stack will enable sends and returns, buses, and all of the mixed jazz that you want. So now we have a sum stack. So we're going to go through and do that with all these. Let's close them all up. Option click one. And I'm going to call this listening now to what we have. Thank you.